From Jennifer, two beautifully styled recliners, just $3.29, covered in plush microfiber. So sit back and relax, because both are only $3.29. From Jennifer. Closed captioning, sponsored by... Is three more than two? Duh! Quilted Northern Ultra Plush is the only three-layered bath tissue with plush quilts. It has two layers for softness and a third for absorbency. Quilted Northern Ultra Plush. Experience three layers for yourself. WKBN 27 First News, where your news comes first. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. The investigation continues into yesterday's accident at a construction site in Hudson. That is first at five tonight. Albert Joseph Bagnoli Jr. does remain in serious condition tonight at Akron City Hospital after being trapped under 10 feet of mud when a trench collapsed. Bagnoli, along with James Wetzel of Canfield, were digging a sewer line in a new housing development. Wetzel died at the scene. OSHA inspectors were back on the scene today. While refusing to go on camera, they did say OSHA rules require a trench box be set up when digging in 15 feet of saturated ground. The two men were found just beyond that box and were not protected by it. The 911 tape shows just how serious that situation was. And OSHA also cited Bagnoli Construction in 1998 for a trench violation. The latest now from Liberty, where a 25-year-old woman admits playing a role in the murders of a mother and daughter. Apollonia Baker was, had pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter and complicity to aggravated burglary. The prosecution will recommend she serve six years in prison in return for her testimony against four other defendants. Baker and the others are accused in the November murders of 28-year-old Wilnice Green and her daughter, 13-year-old Jabrasia. In the meantime, the man charged with attacking a woman in a grocery store parking lot will go to trial. Robert Cookson appeared in court yesterday for a preliminary hearing. Shenango Township Police say he approached his victim and asked if she, if she was done using her cart and then attacked her with a knife when she tried to get into her car. A 27-year-old Warren man is being extradited to California to face a bank robbery charge. Thomas John Claggett did waive an extradition hearing this morning in Trumbull County Common Pleas Court. He's wanted for a robbery in Marin County, California back in 2006. Continuing coverage now of the incident where a Warren police officer stopped three children. Jeff Houlihan told investigators that he stopped those boys because they were running in a way to avoid detection, he says, and he felt they may have been involved in a breaking and entering ring. Houlihan also said he stopped the boys because everything needs to be checked out, he says. In uh, reading his statement, it just shows me that um, we can be viewed as suspects no matter who we are or where we live uh, to some police officers. The boys' parents are accusing the officer of holding their children at gunpoint because of their race. The boys told us they were on their way home from Lincoln Elementary School. A Youngstown attorney has been indefinitely suspended by practicing law by, from, from practicing law by the Ohio Supreme Court. Charles Thiesler was suspended after being convicted on 98 felony drug charges as well as practicing surgery without a license. The court says those crimes were committed while Thiesler was a medical assistant at Pain Management Associates in Youngstown back in 2004. He and two doctors were arrested by federal agents for dispensing out large numbers of pain pills. More than 100 workers at the Columbiana County Board of Developmental Disabilities are set to walk off the job later this month. The Employees Association has issued an intent to strike notice effective April 23rd. It will affect both full and part-time staff. Members have been working without a contract for 15 months now. Commissioners, they've also asked county commissioners to get involved in moving contract negotiations forward. Commissioners have um, appointments on that DD board, however we don't govern, we aren't the governing board for them. So as we stated to them that we'd, we'd be happy to take the information that they provided with us. The Employee Association says a neutral fact finder did recommend a contract which employees accepted but the board rejected. Union members have an informational picket planned at the board office on Saturday. 
An old train station is restored and reopened at, as a new kind of transportation stop in downtown Lisbon. Officials held a ribbon cutting and dedication ceremony this afternoon for the PL&W train station restoration project. That building was originally built in the late 1800s and served as a, rail, as a railroad station and later a feed mill. In the mid-1990s, the property was acquired by the county as part of the new engineer's office building project, and it has spent five years and $815,000 in grant money to bring that building back to life. The uh, stained glass is all the original. Naturally, there were some panes broken out, but uh, we were able to find replacement. All The majority of the hardware, all the doors, all the trim, all the uh, wall coverings are all originals. This is back the way it looked if you walked in here in 1885. That newly renovated station will serve as a stop for people using the bike trail or just enjoying the downtown Lisbon area. Ohio's Republican candidate for U.S. Senate made a stop in the Valley this morning. Rob Portman took a tour of the Youngstown Business Incubator and learned about the companies that have grown from the downtown office space in the past decade. From turning technologies to its newest tenant, Revere Data, Portman says he was impressed with both the model and the success of the facility. So they go from incubator to acceleration, and then when the company is, is very successful, they want to be sure that company continues to network with the, the startup companies. Uh, and it seems to me like uh, this is a really good model. It helps every company because they're interacting with each other. Portman will face off in November against the winner of the Democratic race between Jennifer Bruner and Lee Fisher. And some sad news out of the local Democratic Party tonight. Dorothy McLaughlin, who could be seen at political functions all year round in the Mahoning Valley, passed away last night. She was the state central committee woman for the 33rd district and also the first female sheriff's deputy in the state. Dorothy McLaughlin was 83 years old. A local nursing home is offering something a little different for its residents. The Campus Health Care Center is, helping, is holding basic com computer classes. They're being taught by Mark Mazaros, who's a resident at campus. This month, he began teaching others easy ways to keep in touch with their families. Mark uses a computer in a recreation center at the facility to teach everything from email to Facebook. We hooked her wedding up. Her, her family was getting married on a Saturday. And, uh, they were able to send the pictures, and she was sitting here watching the pictures uh, on the screen. And in fact, we have all the wedding pictures on the screen. So far, eight residents have signed up for those classes. I swear that it was nice just a day ago today, though lots of...